Welcome to the Wilson County News. I'm Richard. And I'm Rachel. On our show for you today, we talk about the Boston Marathon. Friendship uh, athlete did finish the marathon. Uh, we talk about Wilson County's budget discussion. Uh, the, the Sounds has one of our local boys singing the anthem before the game. The historic post office right on East Main Street. Wilson County's most wanted. Getting lean and slim right here in Lebanon, Tennessee. <laughs> and just a little bit about the guys that caught all the fish. But first we want to talk about the budget. What was that about? That was a county meeting that happened w Monday night. Right. On Monday, the Wilson County Commissioners met to talk about the proposed budget and a, a pay increase for the county employees. Um, apparently, the meeting ran a, over an hour and a half long and it was decided to not decide anything right now because some members felt that they did not have enough information so instead of r putting it down right they're just going to go back and tweak it a little bit and maybe gather some more information about what is actually proposed in the budget before they vote on it well now we did have a guy with a camera good old John that had went to the county meeting, recorded the whole thing, and you can watch it in in its entirety at www.wilsoncounty-news.com. Click on the link, and you'll be able to watch the entire thing and see what all really happened. Uh, it's it's just that they didn't want to, you know, there were people that were going to vote against it. There were people that were going to vote for it. They wanted to make sure that they had it right before it came down to that. Yeah, a couple of different department heads had some raised some concerns about it and had some additional questions. And they kind of just want to be clear on, on all the specifics before they actually vote on it and put it into play. Also, the historic Lebanon Post Office, which is at 203 East Main Street, and on October the 30th of this year, will be a hundred years old yes it will so they're gonna they're gonna try to do a little facelift with it get it dressed up look nice and uh, put it on the historic registry correct that's right um, the Wilson County Election Commission and historic Lebanon they have collaborated um, for this 100th anniversary to put it as a historic site and the groundbreaking was actually October 30th of 1913. So it's it's been around for a while. <laughs> a long time. And all, you know, this is not the only building that is in Lebanon that has a historic that it is on the historic registry. The uh, first church, which is also behind that post office, it's on the historic re registry also. And uh, it. You know, also, if you want to check out some other places, you can go into the Wilson Archive Building that's right there opposite the post office and uh, go in there. And I'm sure they, they got plenty of pictures and stuff. But now, what's the information if you have pictures? And right, if you have pictures or any kind of story that goes along relatives? with relatives, right? My grandfather, Jim Farley, was actually associate postmaster. I think it was back in the 70s, it was before I was around. Um, but I'm going to try and fish up some pictures to, to add to their collection. But if you do have any pictures or any stories about the old post office, you can contact the election commission at 615. 444 or you can contact Historic Lebanon at 615-547-9795. Now, the old post office, it's not just a shut-down building. They actually do things in it on a regular basis. Yeah, that's the normal place for early elections. Right. So, if you if you've ever early voted, that's where you're going to that's where you would go to. Mm -hmm. And uh, of course, if you've ever been in there, or if you haven't been in there, go visit because this place has some really nice solid wood uh, mantles mm -hmm. where the fireplaces would be. Huge box building, two stories tall, so it's actually three. I can't. I don't know. It's a big open <laughs> space, though. Yeah. So. And, uh, you know, it, it, I believe it's two stories, but by the time you count the attic space and everything that's a huge yeah, i'd say it, i'd say it's three stories but it's it's a beautiful building inside and out yes so if you haven't gone to see it 
just stop by and check it out. And we'll be right back after these messages. Hi, this is Jerry Kramer and I am with the CMG Radio Club. We are bringing a great music festival extravaganza to Lebanon. Uh, April 27th and 28th, the whole weekend, a fun-filled family weekend. Uh, and you can, there's 44 acts, 9 artists, and we'd like to invite you to come out. The details you can find at Children's Teddy Bear Foundation.com. You can buy your tickets there too. Let's face it, the economy is terrible. Here's a chance to make an extra $1,400 a month. Who couldn't use that? Rappers in my city, mad friend, wishing I retired. Cause it's the movement. I told y'all, Jonesy, Jensen. The City Cafe East is the best kept lunch secret in Nashville. If you're starving and want real home cooked food, this is the place. Folks, this is the best meat and three in Nashville. Chef George prepares mouth-watering specials every day. Choose from baked chicken, pork chops, turkey and dressing, and of course, the best roast beef anywhere. The City Cafe East, the best meat and three in town, is open Monday through Friday, 10 to 2.30 for your convenience. City Cafe East, 1455 Lebanon Pike and Spence Lane. The way cooking should be. Okay, Wilson County's most wanted this week is a Mr. Banks, Jr., He's 5 feet, 9 inches tall, weight 165 pounds, was last seen over on Carthage Highway. Warrants are for failure to appear in criminal court and two counts of vehicle burglary and theft of property. If you have seen Mr. Banks, please call 444-1412, extension 268. If you have seen Mr. Banks, please call the same number, extension zero. All right, Sunday is going to kick off our Lean in Lebanon. Now this is sponsored by the Chamber of Commerce and Sports Village, and it's a, it's a promotion helping Lebanon citizens to become healthy. Um, the 98 participants have already been chosen. The kickoff is going to be this Sunday at Sports Village. They're going to be given um, a personal trainer to help them choose healthier lifestyles. It's going to include trips to the grocery store to help them make healthier choices when they're, they're planning their meals. And it's going to end at the jo Go Johnny Go 5K um, and the winner of this competition will have two round tickets to Florida, which will be compliments of Hartman Plantation. Okay, so this this is not just working out at Sports Village. It's supposed to be they're, a lifestyle change. Okay, so they're going to help you select the proper foods and everything at the grocery store, which means you've got to eat your greens. Yep, vegetables, fruits, healthy proteins, Maybe a few carbohydrates. But I like my ice cream. That maybe can go into <laughs> dairy, possibly, if you limit it. It's all about moderation. That's true. Moderation, moderation. in anything, will, you'll be okay. And they're probably going to start them out slow with the, with the exercise program so they don't get burnt out. But they'll right. be put with a trainer so they'll be able to work towards the goal of, of actually losing the weight and gaining the muscle and putting on the muscle weight properly. Well, hey, you know, that's another thing in the, uh, as far as judging the winner at the end, because, you know, a guy can lose body fat pretty easily. Yeah, we but, know. <laughs> but then they put on all this muscle weight, and then what do you do? Okay. You're out of luck. <laughs> <laughs> we will be right back after these commercial messages. 
first of all, we would like to say that the Boston Marathon participants and their family members are in our prayers here at the Wilson County News Team. One of uh, Lebanon's Friendship Christian former students was actually a participant in this marathon on Monday. His name was Josh Earhart of Gallatin. He actually finished about an hour before the bombs went off and didn't really know about it until he saw it on the news because he was already back to his hotel room. Um, it was quite a frightening thing for him once he did realize it because his parents were actually standing in the area where the bombs went off. Wow, that's got to be a really scary thing. Uh, there were, there have been three, there's three dead from those bombs and 130 people were just injured mm -hmm. in that. And so it's glad, it's a good thing to know that he is okay. All, and if you haven't seen much information about this, you can catch it on CNN. There's a lot of videos on YouTube now. When uh, so you can catch it there. But uh, back to Mr. Earhart, he was at a uh, 2010 f friendship is when he graduated, and he crossed the finish line about an hour before the explosions right. had happened. And uh, he said that was just a really just really bad thing to see that what had happened there. Yeah, he's he's obviously still collecting his thoughts and feelings and emotions on the whole thing, and he did comment that it was just absolutely disgusting that something like that could happen. It right. did happen. Uh, there, now there were some Mount Juliet runners, a Manuel Arellano, sixty-two, and Kimberly Manning, forty-six. Attempts to reach the three local, the lo, those local runners were uh, unsuccessful. Oh, and also Alexander Miller. So they just did not want to talk about it. But if if you happen to be friends with those people, ask them to see what happened. And again, our condolences go out to them. Yes. Uh, also, a nine-year-old performing the national anthem at the Sounds Ball Field. Yes, on April 27th. He is a Lebanon, um, he's a Lebanon citizen. He goes to Castle Heights Elementary and he's actually in their play this spring, uh, The Little Mermaid. He is Sebastian the Crab and has two solos in that. But apparently he's been performing since he was, what, two I think it says? Yes, two years old. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> so, uh, hey, this is a big thing, you know. This he's starting out young, doesn't doesn't seem to mind the crowd at right. all. I think his name is Grayson Campbell. So congratulations, Grayson. We will be rooting for you on April 27th at the Sounds game. Yes, and, you know Castle Heights. Another thing, just as a little reminder, they have the most amount of twins per population. I did read that. <laughs> we had covered that about a month ago and that was something that got onto the morning news. <laughs> so we just wanted to bring you back a little information on that. Also, the guys that were caught the 420 fish. Yes. Yeah, and one of the guys was 78. They, they're they still in, going to have to go to court and stuff about this. We're afraid that they're going to try to make a show of what these guys have done. Make an example out of them. Right. Hi, this is Jerry Kramer and I am with the CMG Radio Club. We are bringing a great music festival extravaganza to Lebanon. Uh, April 27th and 28th, the whole weekend, a fun-filled family weekend. Uh, and you can, there's 44 acts, 9 artists, and we'd like to invite you to come out. The details you can find at Children's Teddy Bear Foundation .com. You can buy your tickets there too. Let's face it, the economy is terrible. Here's a chance to make an extra $1,400 a month. Who couldn't use that? That will be fifteen fifty for the pizza. You got any gold? These days, seems like everybody is trying to buy your gold. 
Hey, lady, I'll give you 20 bucks for those earrings. But not everyone will pay you top dollar. At Lebanon Jewelry and Coin Exchange, 612 South Carberland, for always buying gold, 2975 South Rutherford Boulevard in Murfreesboro, we have been buying jewelry, coins, sterling silver, even broken jewelry for over 20 years. We will weigh your items right in front of you and pay you top dollar in cash. So bring your gold to one of these two locations. Why take your chances anywhere else? The City Cafe East is the best kept lunch secret in Nashville. If you're starving and want real home cooked food, this is the place. Folks, this is the best meat and three in Nashville. Chef George prepares mouth watering specials every day. Choose from baked chicken, pork chops, turkey and dressing, and of course, the best roast beef anywhere. The City Cafe East, the best meat and three in town, is open Monday through Friday, 10 to 2 30 for your convenience. City Cafe East, 1455 Lebanon Pike at Spence Lane. The way cooking should be. Hey, it's Wolfie with the Coal Creek Entertainment Report for the Wilson County News. And you're probably wondering why I'm dressed like a farmer tonight with my John Deere ball cap on. It's because my baby thinks my tractor's sexy. <laughs> well, no, no, really, I just want you farmers to get out there. This is planting season, and I want to make sure that y'all's planting beans this year because I'm a musician, and beans is the musical fruit. I applaud for that one. Now, Jimmy Sports Bar is going to have the Country Express playing live on April the 20th. And they got a blues jam every Thursday night. Sammy B's at the mill is going to have Patrick Greer playing his jams down there. And Saturday, these lucky guys and some girls. That's actually a band, man. And those guys must be pretty lucky to have these girls. Now... On the 25th, we got the kids' rodeo going on. And on the 26th, we're going to have a real rodeo going on. I mean, Lebanon's going to be busy this weekend. And I hope y'all did not miss the jazz at the mill. Of course, if you did, you didn't realize how much fun we had out there. Oh, man, I'm telling you what. I bet you probably forgot. The great extravaganza of the Teddy Bear Music Festival that's going on. And that's on Saturday, April the 27th and the 28th from 8 a.m. till midnight both nights at the James E. Ward Ag Center on 945 East Bad Door Parkway. And that's in Lebanon, Tennessee. We got RV and camping sites that'll be available. Two stages of great entertainment, country, bluegrass, and gospel music shows to benefit the Monroe Carroll Jr. Children's Hospital. There's going to be over 54 acts going on out there. Actually, 55. Maybe more. Glenn Douglas Tub, Dottie Snow Tub, Razzie Bailey, and TJ Christian, along with many others. A weekend of great family fun. Don't y'all miss it. Auctions and door prizes and giveaways and raffles and more. You could win a custom-built Clarity guitar. Man, there's something. Oh, you can get your tickets half price online. And that's $20. $40 at the gate. Vendors and sponsors are welcome. Y'all bring them on. We're going to have plenty of concessions, more than to eat than what you can handle. And, man, I'm telling you what, it's presented by the CMG Radio Club International. And cameras is welcome. Y'all make sure you bring your cameras now. Now, Wolfie's got a special thing for you here. I've cut an album, and it's called Wolfie's Cyber Lounge Number 1. It's all original material. Man, you'll love it. And it ain't going to cost you a whole lot. But I ain't even going to tell you what the price is right now. If you're interested, you need to call down here and talk to somebody at the station. And we'll be glad to hook you up, man. I'm telling you what, we've got more fun going on down here in Lebanon than you have ever expected to go on in a small town like this. Us hillbillies is having more fun than you can shake a stick out down here. We've been down here, well, I've been out chasing greased pigs, to be quite frank about it. And some of them pigs play guitars. <laughs> you might not believe that, but who loves you, baby? Who loves you? It's Wolfie. Wolfie Cyberland loves you. And be sure to stay tuned. See you next week. I love you all. God bless and goodbye.
Spring a leak or plug drain, who do you call? Bill Smith Plumbing. That means real big savings and getting the job done professionally. Residential or commercial, save money. Call Bill Smith Plumbing, 818-5508. That's 818-5508. All right, Jason Nash here again from the Living and Fairgrounds. We've got a couple of judges here with us today. We've got Brent and Darwin, and uh, we're going to find out a little bit about how they go about judging this uh, wonderful food that's going on out here. So tell us a little bit about, you know, what, what, what determines the prize-winning meats. Well, you've got a scorecard to okay. start with, kind of a guideline to give you... Uh, you judge one through nine, mm -hmm. uh, nine obviously being best, and then you're judging on taste. Um, first, you're judging, judging, judging on appearance, taste and tenderness, and then um, overall product. And so you've kind of got uh, a little scorecard to, to, to select from. And, and you, it's, it's all about personal choice. Sure. So. One thing that was noticeable about it is that you judge each one on its own merit. You don't do one against the other. Your scorecard allows you to look at the appearance, and mark that score down, and then you do the same way when you're doing the taste and texture. And so it's not necessarily it's not, a competition between... It's not, you know, no, it's not a competition at all between this one and that one right. versus these. It's based on its own individual merit, which is, is great. Yeah, that's that's the way to do it, I believe. Now, do you gain a pound or two when you... Two pounds. <laughs> two pounds? They said if we ate everything that was presented in front of us, it would be equal to about two full pounds. All right, Wilson County, this is Jason Nash here reporting from the Lebanon Fairgrounds. Uh, we got the barbecue co cook-off going today. Um, it's uh, Alpha Gamma Rho National Cook-Off, and we're here with the Beta Theta chapter, and Blake. And we just wanted to get a little idea of what's going on here. I mean, there's some good food, it smells great, and tell us a little bit about the competition. Well, we've got uh, 25 teams here today. Uh, a lot of people come in from all over the United States, uh, as far as Pennsylvania, uh, Virginia, a lot of local chapters around here in, Mur in uh, Murfreesboro, Tennessee, Knoxville. Uh, and you guys are from Murfreesboro, so. We're from Murfreesboro, we're the alumni local, team. Local guys, so. Yeah. All right, guys, Jason Nash back here again with you from Lebanon Fairgrounds. I'm here with Ryan from the Beta Omega chapter, uh, Springfield, Missouri. And as you see here, I got a wonderful piece of barbecue chicken. And so tell me what's going on, Ryan. How, how are you guys? You're having a good time out here, I guess, huh? Oh, yeah, we're having a great time. We we got the invites to come out here and jumped on it right away. We've got a lot of a lot of talented cooks in our fraternity, and everybody wanted to get out here and have a good time. We knew we'd get a chance to interact with some of the other, other chapters and get out here and do what we like to do. And you are the head chef here. Uh, yeah, for this for this certain one, I am the head chef. Awesome, awesome. Well, uh, tell us what kind of meat you're cooking up here today. Obviously, we got a wonderful piece of barbecue chicken here that I'm working on. Uh, we did. I say we did the chicken, chicken breast, and leg quarters. Uh, we also did our the ribs, and then we did the pulled pork. Um, and then for our anything goes, we did a some homemade, it just breakfast sausage, kind of brought like sausage. Awesome. So is this your first time here in uh, the Lebanon? Yeah, this, this is my first time in the Lebanon competition, yes. Awesome. Well, we wish you luck. Tell us a little bit about your uh, smoker here. I mean, you guys put that together, right? Uh, yeah, this is actually uh, my great uncle's smoker, and we built it a few years back now. I'll say it's, he, he actually, we built it, he sold it, and bought a bigger one, and I actually thought I was going to pick up the bigger one. Turned out when I got there, he had already bought this one back, and this is the, what I ended up pulling down here. So nice. this is the first time I have ever cooked on this this particular smoker. Well, it's, uh, it's quite a smoker there, but you, uh, you were telling us you're going to be building. Spring a leak or plug drain, who do you call? Bill Smith Plumbing. That means real big savings and getting the job done professionally. Residential or commercial, save money. Call Bill Smith Plumbing, 818-5508. That's 818-5508. Hi, this is Jerry Kramer, and I am with the CMG Radio Club. We are bringing a great music festival extravaganza to Lebanon. Uh, April 27th and 28th, the whole weekend, a fun-filled family weekend. Uh, and you can, there's 44 acts, nine artists, and we'd like to invite you to come out. The details you can find at Children's Teddy Bear Foundation.com. You can buy your tickets there too.
Let's face it, the economy is terrible. Here's a chance to make an extra $1,400 a month. Who couldn't use that? That'll be 1550 for the pizza. You got any gold? These days, seems like everybody is trying to buy your gold. Hey lady, I'll give you 20 bucks for those earrings. But not everyone will pay you top dollar. At Lebanon Jewelry and Coin Exchange, 612 South Carberland, we're always buying gold 2975 South Rutherford Boulevard in Murfreesboro. We have been buying jewelry, coins, sterling silver, even broken jewelry for over 20 years. We will weigh your items right in front of you and pay you top dollar in cash. So bring your gold to one of these two locations. Why take your chances anywhere else? And what was your name again? Uh, Devin. Devin, I'm Jason again, so. Okay. All right. All right, Jason Nash here again. I'm with Devin, uh, another barbecuer, head chef. Uh, wanted to find out a little bit more about what's going on out here in Lebanon today. There's a lot of good food. Uh, tell us a little bit about what you guys did today. Uh, well, we just came out for the uh, the brotherhood and fellowship uh, more than anything today. Of course, everybody likes to compete as well, so we just came out and cooked some ribs and some chicken and, mm. uh, you know. Good stuff. Had a good time, yeah. I tell you, walking around here, it just smells so good and just can't hardly stand it. But So, uh, now were you in all levels of competition here? I mean, all the... Yeah, we, we went ahead, Jason. We went ahead and entered all the categories, so, uh, you know, we figured if we're here, we might as well get the biggest bang for our buck. Right? Absolutely, absolutely. <laughs> and I guess they're done now with the... Uh, the judging, they're tallying up the scores, so hopefully you guys come out on I top, so. right? Yeah, maybe maybe we can luck out and get our name called today. Hey, no, we, we hope that happens for you. Absolutely. We appreciate you letting us come talk to you, though. Thanks, and, Jason. Uh, good luck. We appreciate it. Thanks. All right, Jason Nash back with you here again at the Lebanon Fairgrounds. I'm with Kai right now from the uh, MTSU chapter, and... We are uh, wondering what you had for the Anything Goes meet today. Oh uh, Well, we kind of got sprung a curveball there. We didn't have anything going in the last day, and we had a buddy uh, come up with a lamb chop for us, so mm. we did smoked lamb right there at the end. Wow, how did that turn out? It turned out amazing. We were scared to death for four and a half hours with it on the smoker, and it turned out better than we could have planned. Hopefully, wow. we took that division home. That's awesome. That's awesome. What other meats did you have going? Uh, we had the pulled pork, uh, ribs, and three chickens, of course. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> We've seen some good food up here today anyway i can't wait to see the results we wish you luck and uh i guess we'll find out about six o'clock tonight what's going on with that absolutely thank you appreciate it kai absolutely You know, I never heard of this game. Where I come from, that meant a whole different thing. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> it really did. Exactly. <laughs> he told me, you First want to go play some cornhole? I'm going, cornhole. no. Yeah. <laughs> Wait, what are y'all talking about now? <laughs> Where y'all from? Here. Here. Yeah. What's going on? Uh, original. Cameras and stuff. Oh, news. news? Wilson County News. Oh, mm -hmm. cool. Yeah. Well, you better bleep out a lot of stuff. <laughs> well, you know where I'll probably see it right here. Yeah. We're usually the worst yeah. offenders. <laughs> well, that's great, man. Well, thank you, Hugh, for that very generous introduction. Um, Rod Kemp, John Ruskin, Tony Abbott, um, Mr. Premier, 
Mr. Lord Mayor, Your Eminence, um, and friends of the Institute of Public Affairs, and fellow champions of the free market. Let's be clear about our purpose this evening. We are not here to mark an anniversary that just commemorates the past. We are here to champion a vision that speaks to the future. That vision remains as vital today as when the IPA was founded back in 1943. <clears throat> the Australians who came together that decisive year were concerned about the drift to socialism they thought might prove a legacy of the war. My father, as has been mentioned, I'm proud to say, was among those men. They set up the IPA to help write a different future for this country. What they wanted was simple. An Australia where men and women <coughs> would rise in society, not because they were born into privilege, but because they earned it with their hard work, their thrift, and their enterprise. As you've pursued this vision over the years, you've had many victories. In your early years, you helped defeat the post-war bid to nationalise Australian banks, often fighting the banks as much as the government. You were an early advocate of the great reforms pushed by Labor and Liberal governments alike to open up Australia by deregulating privatising, reducing tariffs, and floating the dollar. And today, you are leading the fight for freedom of speech in Australia. So on the 70th anniversary, I say to you, your victories have truly been victories for the Australian people. And it's the great hope of everyone in this room that you will continue the vital work that will make Australia a freer, more competitive, more hopeful, and more successful society. Success is not something we can take for granted. Success must be fought for, and success must be won. But instead of hearing about new initiatives that would make Australia more competitive and open up new opportunities for the Australian people, we hear more of the class warfare rhetoric that has proved so toxic and so damaging to older nations. And here is something else we are not <coughs> hearing ab about. We must argue the morality of free markets and the immorality of markets that are not free. The coal commercial word <coughs> market disguises <coughs> its human character. A market is a collection of our aspirations, exertions, choices, and desires. I saw that up close last week in China, <coughs> with the digital marketplace and others has become a launch pad for individual opportunities unimaginable to the Chinese of 20 years ago. Typically, those of us who believe in free markets make our arguments by extolling the market's economic superiority. But I believe we need to do something very different from what we are used to. We need to defend the market on precisely the grounds that its critics attack, on justice and fairness. Yes, the morality of free markets. Outside your typical Western university, most people these days do not question the free market superiority when it comes to performance. Even the so-called communists in China have come around to the view that Adam Smith is a more reliable guide for a nation than Karl Marx or Chairman Mao. Uh, <clears throat> The results in Australia are equally clear. As the Productivity Commission recently reported, since those market reforms of the 1980s, Australian wages have increased by one-third in real terms. Over the same time, the number of jobs went from 6.9 million 
to 11.5, increasing faster than the population. So when it comes to producing results, there's no contest. Even so, there's one thing we still have not won. We have not persuaded people that the market does better because it is more moral, or that socialism fails because it is largely immoral in its denial of fundamental freedoms. <laughs> to the contrary, too many people think that the market succeeds because it is based on a vice, greed. And the socialism is better because it is based on a virtue, sharing. Now, naturally, they conclude from this the way to make capitalism more just and more humane is to temper it by injecting a large dollop of government mandated sharing. Or worse, if I may say it, like President Obama, the government is always better. We see this contradiction everywhere. And to be fair, it's not just those on the left side of the political aisle. Here's another example. In Britain, David Cameron, yes, David Cameron, gave a speech in which he rightly defended the morality of the market. But when he went on to say how he would improve its fairness by having his government issue guidelines on executive pay with legislation to follow if necessary. You know, and the same is true here. How often have you elected political leaders to fight against some horrible regulation or tax, only to watch as they basically agree to a watered down version of what their opponents are arguing? Placing a nation, <coughs> placating a nation, is not leading a nation. How often, to give one example, do you hear the same people who are calling for free trade go on in the next breath to argue for stronger anti-dumping laws, a backdoor form of protectionism? <laughs> Crony capitalism is not capitalism. It's cronyism. So long as we allow the debate to be framed by people who think the market is efficient because it is based on a human failing, we're going to lose every argument. The only way to uphold market freedom is to show people that the market doesn't succeed because of greed. In fact, it's just the opposite. The market succeeds because it gives people incentives to put their own wants and needs aside to address the wants and needs of others. To succeed, you have to produce something that other people are willing to pay for. <clears throat> Matt Ridley, a friend of mine, is a British author who has given great thought to these issues. He wrote a famous book called The Rational Optimist that many of you must know. He points out a few simple facts. First, that today, by almost any measure you can think of, people on this planet are better fed, better sheltered, better protected than they've ever been. And that prosperity has really accelerated in the last hundred years. Indeed, that the average person's standard of living has improved tenfold, yes, tenfold, just in the last century. Second, he says, that the key is simply trade or the interchange of goods, services, and most important, of ideas among people. Third, and this is important for our moral point, that you can't really have trade unless we trust each other. Let's put this in human terms. Recently, the World Bank reported that in 1981, 42% of people living in the, in the developing world had to live on less than a dollar a day. 
that is one and a half billion people living in miserable poverty or even starvation. And 30 years later, that percentage has been reduced to 14%, a huge change in a relatively short period of time. Now, what could be more moral than that? This is unparalleled in history. Now there is a great deal left to be done because hundreds of millions of people still live in terrible conditions. But a remarkable proportion of our overall progress is attributable to Asia since it moved to markets and it is only accelerating. I believe that one of the great crimes of our time is how we take this for granted. It's certainly not true for those on the receiving end. For the Chinese boy who can go to university, for the African mum who has enough to feed her babies, for the teenager in India or in Latin America, the market has opened possibilities for a better life that their parents and grandparents never even dreamed of. For these people and their families, the advance of the market has been a life-altering event. And because of these openings, they look to the future with confidence that opportunities will grow. If the market were as immoral as some of our politicians would have you believe, it could not do this. Arthur Brooks goes further. Arthur runs a think tank very much like the IPA in America. He's written a terrific book talking about the morality of the market. What he means is that the market isn't about selfishness or greed, or the rich getting richer and the poor getting poorer. It is about fairness and opportunity. He defines fairness as a universal opportunity to, join, <coughs> to enjoy earned success. That means enjoying the fruits of our success, which turns out to be healthier for people than just having others give them things. He's also pretty scathing about some of government actions that pass for compassion these days. What's fair or compassion, a compassionate, for example, about using taxpayer dollars to bail out Wall Street bankers? Uh, <laughs> what's fair about taking money from people who have earned it and giving it to people who didn't? Uh, what's just about a generation of people who rack up government debt for their own health care and retirement while leaving their children and grandchildren to foot the bill? That's a criticism. <laughs> I think that's, it's fair to say that's a criticism that is more true of other nations than Australia. But the answer is that there's nothing compassionate, fair, or just about doing those things. Yet governments do these things every day, largely because those of us who know they will only make the problems worse seem to forget that we have a moral as well as a financial case for reform. In too many countries, the public sector has lost. Hi, this is Jerry Kramer and I am with the CMG Radio Club. We are bringing a great music festival extravaganza to Lebanon, uh, April 27th and 28th, the whole weekend, a fun-filled family weekend. Uh, and you can, there's 44 acts, nine artists, and we'd like to invite you to come out. The details you can find at childrensteddybearfoundation.com. You can buy your tickets there too. Let's face it, the economy is terrible. Here's a chance to make an extra $1,400 a month. Who couldn't use that? In too many countries, the public sector has lost sight of the public that it's supposed to serve and instead become self-serving. 
But if we are to win, we must do more than simply oppose what we find unfair and immoral about government intervention. After all, people should not be opposed to a reasonable level of regulation, taxation and spending, especially when it comes to providing a safety net that will allow the poorest, most unfortunate among us to live with dignity. But we need to put all these things in the context of just what we mean by a fair and just society. At its core, a fair and just, uh, just society is one where opportunity is open to all, not just those at the top. Let's take one example, economic growth. We all know growth is absolutely vital to a free society. No one should want Australia to be a stagnation, a nation with a stagnant economy and stagnant aspirations. But these days, when we argue more economic growth or lower taxes, many people <coughs> think to themselves, that's fine for hedge fund managers and CEOs. It doesn't mean anything for an ordinary broke like me. Our challenge is to bring that message to such people, whether they are on the shop floor or behind a desk, in a way that lets them understand why they stand to benefit more from a society that rewards their work and initiative more than that pretends to spread the wealth around. That's not always an easy case to make. Unfortunately, it becomes much harder when our side confuses being pro-free market with being pro-business. You see this confusion everywhere. Many of the same people who appreciate that too much welfare can be bad for a single mother somehow believe that spending tax dollars on industrial hubs is an excellent investment. Um, when we do these things, we undermine our case for free markets by conveying the impression that the benefits are only for the already rich, well-connected and politically powerful. That is why we must have a press free from government intervention and why government attempts to regulate the press in Australia and Britain have been ill-conceived. The press, of course, must be held accountable, but so must our politicians. Uh, <clears throat> grievances and grudges should not fuel a fundamental shift in our social balance. Many of those who resort to class warfare do so because they believe <coughs> uh, that people are naturally envious of others. Well, I don't believe that. In my life, I've learned that most people want the same thing. They are not driven by class resentment. What they want most is to make a better life for their so themselves and more important, for their families and to know that the opportunities for their children will be better than they were for themselves. People begin to, <clears throat> People begin to resent the rich only when they conclude that the system is rigged. To put it another way, we want to persuade people that income inequality is not the right way to measure the fairness of our society. We have to make sure that social mobility is real, especially for people in the bottommost levels of society. By that me measure, we have much left to do. So on the 70th anniversary of IPA, I leave you with this thought. The battles we have fought, the victories we have won, the free market reforms have given people all across this country more opportunity, more wealth, and more hope for the future. But these victories will all be hollow unless we can persuade our fellow citizens of the truth behind these reforms, that we fight for these measures, not just because they are efficient, but because they are fair and just and right. Thank you very much.